Chocolight is a presumably dead old man. Why is that even a question? Yes, it's fucking dead. It's, it's dead as hell. Like, I am in complete disbelief that Golden E is here. A lot has changed since you last been here. Recently, we've had some issues. I can't imagine you guys having issues. Roblox Myths. If you don't know, there are a small community of people on Roblox. In the past few years, they've grown in numbers and exploded in popularity. And after a few years in the spotlight, they fell in active members dramatically. So today, I'm here to answer the question, what was the collapse of the myth community? Hello, my name's Kor. For about four years now, I've been in and out of the myth community, and I've seen numerous myths rise and fall, and I've also been part of quite a few. A few of mine have been, like, sort of successful, but most of them not really. But I do have experience. In this video, I'll be going over a few different things. Number one, what a Roblox myth is. I'll be diving into the history of the myth community and discussing some of the first myths. Uh, number two, what caused the quote-unquote downfall of the original myth community? We're going to talk about the huge controversy that sparked the end of an era. Number three, what others think of the community's future. I'll be interviewing different people with different perspectives to get a grasp on what everyone else believes will happen to the myth community in the years to come. Now, a few things before we start. I'll be discussing heavy topics like sexual harassment, doxing, and just douchebaggery of many varieties. I'll have the subjects marked with time skips you can go to if you want to avoid them. Please stay safe. After doing some more research for the intro, I found that my video format is very, very similar to Alluvion's who made a video about this subject three months ago called The Downfall of the Roblox Myth Community. I wrote this script before I found his video and I'm not trying to copy his video in the slightest. With that being said, it's a very well done video and I linked it in the description below. All of this is alleged. I'm talking about allegations made against multiple individuals. This is not meant to slander anyone, and I'm not saying anything is solid fact, even with evidence provided. And I send no hate towards any of the people I mention, and I ask that you don't either. Despite how horrific some of their actions are, they are still human. This video is meant to voice an observation and absolutely nothing more. Now, really quick before we actually get started, Hi, this is my first video. I'm not used to doing voiceovers and I do stutter sometimes. I'm currently using my phone for the microphone, so uh, any suggestions for, you know, cheap microphones like under $200, that would be fabulous in the comments below. And also any suggestions for improvements. I'm also sick right now, so if I sound a bit stuffy, it's because it's I am. Now, without further ado... A myth is a traditional story which uses beings or magic to teach a lesson. Roblox myths are stories which typically involve strange beings or events. They tell a story over the course of months or years, and they typically have games with hidden secrets and important events that give myth hunters lore. As the Reddit page for the Roblox myth community says, uh, Roblox myths are deeply rooted stories told within the world of Roblox about certain events from fascinating to terrifying. The first myth can be traced all the way back to 2006, a year after Roblox was made. On January 27th, two accounts were created, John and Jane Doe. Old Roblox got a hold of the stories and they spread like a wildfire. The two were used as clickbait titles uh, and, and creepypasta, you know, like... They, they, it was a whole thing. If you were there, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, almost 17 years later, the truths come out about them, because Roblox had to disprove all of the claims on a blog post. They were only test accounts, and they will only ever be test accounts. Now, personally, I don't believe these two fit the Roblox myth criteria. Roblox myths are stories made by people and told by people. The mystery they're shrouded in is the player's doing, and it's a mutual relationship between the storyline and the investigator. John and Jane Doe weren't stories created to tell. They were mysterious offline accounts that people discovered and became obsessed with. Personally, I believe one of the first Roblox myth accounts was Nolly, who's really hard to find information on. Roblox has banned his account and countless others like Le Lesus and Smith Colts. But from my understanding, he's a deity-like user that multiple families and myths worship. His entire story is unknown, but he's a user whose story was created by someone and is now being continued by other people. He's not a robot, he was real, and he was a Roblox myth. 
Since then, countless myths have been written and successful. Merch has been sold and money has been made. Um, one of the many popular myths is a story called Shadelight, a truly iconic myth and a mystery that is yet to be solved. Shadelight was a device in Chuck Lloyd's basement, or a portal in Chuck Lloyd's basement, or something in Chuck Lloyd's basement that Goldity was trying to get into. Uh, it, it, the story is honestly really confusing, and despite an investigation going on for three years, the myth has yet to be solved. Chuck feared Shadelight and was even quoted begging investigators to kill it. Shadelight could only be opened with five keys, three of which have been found. The keys belong to Chuck Lloyd, Father Grimm, Eulifer, Masquerades, and Taroa. I really, truly believe that this myth was the beginning. It was one of Flamingo's first videos about the myth community, and it's still one of his most popular. It was the first one I watched, and it's how I got into the myth community. And it was part of the end. I've searched for the answer to the question that sparked this video. Is the myth community dead? Or, more specifically, what was its alleged downfall? The myth community exploded in popularity after Flamingo started creating videos on it, and I really wish that there was a timeline for 2018 and 2019, um, because there is one for 2021 and 2022. But Flamingo would upload videos or join a game and his fandom would follow. The trollers didn't stay for long, but some members lingered and myths exploded in popularity. Gauze amassed 161k followers and 5 million place visits on Roblox alone, and he even sold merch based on his myth. As the myth community grew larger, the need for investigators was called for, people to discover what the story was behind the myth. These myth investigators would join groups dedicated to uncovering the secrets of myths. One of these groups was the Roblox Myth Foundation. RM was a foundation formed in 2014 by Cosdom, who stayed the leader until 2020. As someone who watched this go down, I, I, I believe that this is where we can point our fingers. This is, at the very least, an end of an era, and at the most, the end of the myth community itself. In 2018, Loyan, the dead daughter of Chuck Lloyd, shared allegations of pedophilia and catfishing with Cosdom. The allegations were about a doctor myth called Morgan, who associated with Circus in the Sky, this cult family, and a lone traveler. These allegations led to Cosdom revoking Morgan's myth and making a public announcement on his Discord. When he did this, he leaked private information and it led to Morgan being harassed on Twitter and Discord. The community had tried to stop Cosdom on Twitter. A quote from Topsy, a popular myth at the time, says, I'm willing to risk my myth rep and hard working fighting Cosdom if it means to save the community. I can't let this shit fly. Cosdom has ruined many myths for no reason. Hashtag down with Cosdom. Tweeted in July of 2018. Hashtags like stop Cosdom and down with Cosdom were popular in the community at the time. This drama eventually ended with Topsy's server getting raided by Dr. Mock, who some theorized was backed up by Cosdom, and Morgini eventually retiring as a myth in 2019. That drama should have been the end, but it wasn't because two years later in August of 2020, Cosdom got into another drama, a much more serious, much bigger scale drama. Two prevalent people in the community confronted Cosdom about allegations regarding grooming, abuse, manipulation, transphobia, homophobia, and supporting pedophilia. This led to multiple things. His discord got raided and flooded by bots. He was exposed as being 22 and not 13, as well as exposed as being multiple prevalent myths. This is why I brought up Shadelight. He was allegedly Eulifer and admitted to being Chuck Lloyd. He also admitted to being Martin Colt and Subject Pyro, both of which were widely popular myths at the time. People accused him of making his own myths famous through his myth hunting group. People also accused him of being gauze, though Clinton debunked this on a Twitter post he made in August of 2020. They also believed he was Seth Smiles, though this was also debunked as just being a joke he made on Twitter. Cosdom eventually resigned and gave the RM Foundation over to Sensei Vinny. There's not much I can find on what happened between this time gap, but the RM Foundation was shut down and rebranded as the Bureau of Myths by Exedius, with the final message on the RM group being, RM has officially been shut down. Our new group can be found here, with a link to the Bureau of Myths. The Bureau of Myths has 38k members respectively. The, the group is still active as of early 2023, with members speaking on the group wall multiple times daily. Some drama came out recently about the group, which will be covered in a video soon, so stay tuned. 
Also, just a side note, there was a lot more drama in the costume situation involving DMs, sob stories of his, and numerous accounts of people I haven't even mentioned. For the sake of not digging up old drama and for brevity, I decided to focus on his main offenses. In the description, there's a very useful document by Blood Rage. It goes over a first-hand account of exactly what led up to the drama, and if you're interested in it, you can find more content there. In order to gain a better perspective on the community, I interviewed four people. An outsider looking in, a retired myth, a new myth, and a more seasoned myth. I kept all anonymous and blurred their usernames as to not create any drama surrounding them. I, each all, I asked each of them five main questions with the occasional follow-up. The first question was regarding their association with myths. The second question was about how long each of them had been in the myth community. The Observer joined in 2020, the Retired Myth joined in the middle of 2019, the New Myth joined in 2022, and the Seasoned Myth joined in 2020. A lot of these people joined after the Cosdom drama but still knew about it. My third question was about the state of the myth community. Some of them had high hopes for the myth community, believing it was either getting to a good point or was already there. One didn't really know about the current state of it, and someone else thought it was a mere sliver of what it once was. This is the first question that I really want to dive into individually, starting with the retired myth. Most certainly not proud of what it's become, there's a big list of people to avoid. There are good people within the community, but there are people who just shouldn't have access to the internet. It's sad to say we have a rather big list. The list they're referring to is a blacklist made by a few people in the myth community. It outlines people that have been controversial, dangerous, or predatory. It also gauges how dangerous they are with evidence usually provided. The link will be in the description below, and it seems like a great tool to keep the newcomers in the community safe. I completely agree with her. The community, which was once a mostly positive and safe place, got more progressively dangerous as it grew. That's not to say it doesn't have hope, as the experienced myth said. Okay, good question. The myth community has potential. I think the games are amazing. But the myths in this generation seem to be copy and paste following other myths. For example, family gets haunted by demons or whatever. Lots of upcoming myths are copy and paste in my opinion and don't really seem that interesting. I think this brings up some good points from someone who's watched the community grow over three years. Lots of upcoming myths feel as though they share similar plots with already successful myths, even though there are so many ways to be original if you work at your writing. The newer myth agreed that the community was doing well and had nothing but praise for it. It's really good, the amount of actors I have. It was nice to see a new perspective as someone who's new to the community. It's exciting to see that the new members are enthusiastic about the future of myths and believe that there are still stories in Roblox to be told. The fourth question was about the drama with Costum and whether or not the community has hope after what went down with him. The new myth didn't answer, saying that he believed people already stopped talking about this. The Watcher said what happened was, for lack of better term, really messed up, but he doesn't believe it ruined the myth community. The retired myth said they didn't get too involved into the Costum drama as I was never a part of his server or community. I don't remember much of what happened, although at one point I did. Do you believe he was the downfall of the myth community? There are multiple reasons for the downfall of the myth community, but seeing that he was a big part of it, I wouldn't disagree fully, but I wouldn't put all of the blame on him. The experienced myth said, I know they got into illegal stuff, he's a pedophile, and you could say that he's ruined part of the myth community or its activity, and owning lots of interesting myths Flamingos have made videos on. I agree with both of them. Even if the community is not where it used to be, it can still be revived. It's coming back, as they mentioned with the Myth Awards. It was a nightmare to try to join that game. When the event was going on, it was huge. The fifth and final question was about advice for people just getting into the community or for new upcoming myths. Try to act as chill as possible. Key roll. Chill. Be spooky. Woo. My advice is to not be a copy and paste. If you're coming in the community wanting to be a myth, you better have some building experience or hire people. Because I didn't come in with any and I did horribly. Building helps a crazy ton in being a myth. Also, having some good scripting experience. Keep an open mind about your story. Don't be upset if people guess wrong, but give them a push in the right direction. If you surround yourself with good people, you'll have a fun time and can make good memories. I'd recommend taking a look as well at the list to see who to avoid, but not everyone is bad and terrible in this community. I've met some pretty good friends while I was in the myth community and pe some people I'm glad to call my friends today. 
My advice for up and coming myths would be to be aware that even though this is Roblox, there can be toxic and disgusting people in the community. From personal experience, when there's a group of full of children trying to rise as storytellers, there will be people to take advantage of their desperation. Don't let them and be aware of the tactics manipulators use. Sometimes their behavior isn't just a character. You'll need to have a thick skin as a myth and you'll need to be original. People will try to bring you down, but if you're passionate, you should always be able to rise above them. Now, with all this being said, do I believe the myth community is dead? No, I don't think it ever can die. And I think that even though it's taken a huge dip in activity, it's increasing again in popularity. The myth community will never fully die as long as people keep creating. If you have a story, stick to it and you'll go so far. A huge, huge thanks to everyone who helped me make this video. A special shout out to the voice actors. A silly clown named Flambeau did the work for the experience myth, my friend Mango was the watcher, and my good old chum Ollie did the voice work for the new myth. His Twitch is linked below. As I said earlier, in researching for this video alone, I found some great myths that I plan on investigating in future videos. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time.